I just wrote one little message, nice and light-hearted, about Trump's inauguration. And it's a song you might be familiar with. Barack the President packed his trunk and said goodbye to the White House. Off he went with a trumpety trump, 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 trump. <laughs> Barack the President packed his trunk and shook his head at the mayhem. Off he went with a trumpety trump, 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 trump. Now, the fact is that our friend Donald Trump is not funny. Let's take a look at basically his attitude to trade unions. 
all over the United States, there's laws that are laughably called the right to work. What they mean by the right to work is no rights for trade unions. It's trade unions not having collective bargaining. Trade unions not having the kind of rights that are currently being undermined in this country. If we take a look at his attitude to gun control, he was nominated by the National Rifle Association and he openly opposes any attempt to restrict the control of automatic weapons. Now when you take a look at a country which has 17 times the number of gun slayings as in the United Kingdom, which has a series of mass slayings, this is incredibly irresponsible and reactionary. When you look at Donald Trump's relationships to the alt-right, we have a man who has an organisation that he refuses to condemn that will be Zeke Heiling and chanting, Heil Trump, Heil Trump. This is incredibly chilling. Link that to his father being arrested on a Ku Klux Klan rally when he was a young man. Link that to his attitudes, continual refusals to condemn racism, to continual nod and smirk attacks on black people, and you start to see an agenda which is incredibly disturbing. And it goes on and on. We know the comments that he said about women. Do you really think that that was an accidental comment? That that doesn't relate to sexism, to the discrimination against women in the workplace, to the undermining of anything to do with a kind of collective aspiration to a non-sexist and egalitarian society? Again and again and again, we see on every issue Donald Trump coming out with the most reactionary and regressive opinions. We see it in terms of his attitude to the trade unions, we see it in his attitude to privatisation, and we see it in terms of his own personal investments. Six times his companies have gone bankrupt. Each time the people who picked up the tab have been the working people that work for him. And when you take a look at a place like Atlantic City, you see him building casinos, raking in the money, then abandoning this town in New Jersey to be an absolute ghost town, and he doesn't even have the guts to leave his name Trump on the casino that's gone bankrupt. He takes that down, and he runs off with the money, and he leaves the people who work there in poverty. Now for us, I saw somebody today post on Facebook, not my president, and somebody said, well no, you've got a queen. Now what is our role in the United Kingdom and across the world? We have got a president in the United States now that in addition to all that racism, all that sexism, all those anti-union and pro-gun attitudes, in addition to all that, he says he will bomb ISIS to kingdom come. This is incredibly dangerous when you take a look at what that means. We have to see the defeat of ISIS, but the only people who defeat that reactionary organization will be people like the Kurds in the Middle East fighting them day to day. The history of the West trying to hand democracy in inverted commas to the Middle East has been a catastrophe. It was a catastrophe in Iraq. It was a catastrophe in Libya. It was a catastrophe in Afghanistan. And we have Donald Trump saying that is what he wants to do. Without any irony, when it is Iraq that created ISIS and all the reaction in the first place. They developed out of Al-Qaeda. Al-Qaeda developed out of the ashes of Afghanistan and Iraq. The idea that America must now unleash the B-52s across the Middle East means throwing flames onto the petrol that the United States spilled in the first place. So we have to build a movement in solidarity with the people who will be taking action in America today. Women, the black community, Hispanics, only 8% of people of colour 
voted for Trump. Many of the people like Black Lives Matter will be protesting, will be trying to roll back the policies of this reactionary and unstable individual. We have to give those people solidarity. And we had two brilliant Black Lives Matter demonstrations in this city. Every time people march for solidarity, for black liberation and women's liberation, we will stand with them, we will march with them in this city. We are a city of immigrants. We are Irish, we are black, we are Asian, we are Chinese. We don't want to see a repetition of President Andrew Jackson in the 1820s of an all-white Ku Klux Klan reactionary buffoon with fake hair. We will support any fight against Trump. Thank you. Thanks, Alan. I know that there's a women's demonstration tomorrow by St George's Hall. And I think one of the organisers might be here wanting to speak. Oh, well, if she comes, please let her know, let us know. We've got a couple more speakers. We have a speaker from CND. CND. No. Hello. I think so. Hello. Uh, I'm co-chair at Merseyside CND. Now, uh, when I told some people that I was coming to speak at this rally, he said, "What business is it of CND to protest?" <clears throat> What business is that, that better? What business is it of CND to protest about the, uh, the democratically elected uh, president of the sovereign state? Now, my response is that uh, America is not just any old state, and the president isn't any old president. America is the most powerful nation on earth, and the president is therefore the most powerful man on earth. And if that man has also got the capacity through nuclear nuclear arm, armaments to destroy the, the, the world, then it's, he literally has our lives in his hands. Therefore, every right to express our concern because by his own admission, in his own words, he is willing to, in fact, unleash a new nuclear arms race upon the world. Now, that is what he's actually said. He said that he wants the United States to greatly strengthen and expand its nuclear capability until such time as the world comes to a census regarding nukes. Now, I mean, to me, it's crazy. They already have got 7,300 nuclear warheads, enough to uh, end civilization as we know it. Now, why do they want to actually expand it? Is it better to kill the world three times over rather than just once. So I think that's the height of insanity. Now, talking about wanting to retain and expand nuclear uh, weapons until the world comes to a census regarding nukes. In fact, there are only nine states who actually ha have nuclear weapons. The most of the rest of the world has come to their senses. They want to ban nuclear weapons. The United Nations General Assembly voted last month the conference to begin negotiations on a treaty ban. But the people who didn't, the, the delegates who didn't vote for that, in fact, voted against it or abstained, were the delegates of those nations who hold nuclear weapons. So, in fact, it's those nine countries, including ourselves and the United States, who need to come to the census regarding nukes, not the rest of the world. So it's totally hypocritical. Now, uh, Trump has also posted that he will he will tear up the deal with Iran. That's a deal which prevented Iran from developing nuclear weapons. And he says that, he, that that was too soft and it's going to rip it up. Now, that could lead to a nuclear arms race again. It could lead to Iran developing nuclear weapons, in which case, you know, Egypt and Saudi Arabia might think, well, if it's good enough for Iran, we better get some. But in fact, Trump doesn't care about that. He's actually said that 
more countries should have nuclear weapons. Now, this is weird. It's like, you know, they, he's, he's applying the Second Amendment. That's the one that said that every redneck has the right to own an AK-47. Uh, he's applying that worldwide, as if to say to countries, look, you know, you've got to stand your own two feet and get yourself a couple of nukes. And being Trump, he'd probably say, well, we've got a couple to spare. I can, we can do you a sweet deal. He's a deal maker. But he's also said that he's easy and OK with the nuclear arms race in Asia, like South Korea um, you know, um, and Japan. Why don't they get nuclear weapons? This man is crazy. This man lives in a world of kind of good guys and bad guys. White guys, you know, white Stetsons, black Stetsons. He thinks he's John Wayne. But in fact, he's not John Wayne. Uh, he's got the soul of Homer Simpson. And unfortunately, and uh, we, we all laughed at Homer Simpson in the nuclear uh, facility in Springfield and the mistakes he made. But unfortunately, uh, Homer Simpson is now in the White House. And it's not funny anymore. So we have got a perfect right to say to our administration, to say to our government, don't try to, don't be subservient to the Trump administration, don't be subservient to this man who has proved himself to be misogynist, uh, homophobic, um, and completely disinterested in the wider world. As far as he's concerned, you know, what matters is getting rich, doing deals, and uh, shafting the foreigners. And unfortunately, this is a man whom we have to trust with our lives. So let's speak out loud and clearly and say to our administration, stand up to Trump. Thank you. Thank you.